York City commuters already crossed the most expensive bridge and tunnel toll roads in the country. And the cost to that commute is about to get a lot worse. New York City's new congestion tax could go into effect as soon as next April. And it would cost as much as $23 for a single rush hour trip. That's on top of the $15 that Easy Pass holders already pay during rush hour to cross the George Washington Bridge. Here's what the CEO of Partnership for New York City told us last week about the tax's impact on commuters. New Jersey should get over it. We have more than 80% of Manhattan office workers, including those from New Jersey, use public transportation and will benefit from the tolls from congestion pricing. Well, joining us with his reaction is Congressman Josh Gottheimer of New Jersey. What do you think, Josh? You going to get over it? I don't think any of us are getting over that, including, by the way, the businesses in New York City and everyone who's dying to get New Jersey workers back into New York. What I don't understand about this, Becky, and I, and I think I think you get it, is they want to charge $23 a day on top of the $15 to $17 folks pay already, right? That's an extra $5,000 a year for hardworking folks, a nurse, an electrician, a restaurant worker, just to go into Manhattan. It's insane, and all it's about is because the MTA is the worst, which is their mass transit system, is the worst-run system in the country. They're running $2 billion a year deficits, and they need Jersey's cash. They admit it's not going to actually help reduce traffic. It's going to just move the traffic around. It's going to lead to more pollution in the outer boroughs and in northern New Jersey by the GW Bridge with more cancer-causing pollution from trucks. And so their answer is, let's just stick it to Jersey. Let's let them pay for our mismanagement. Okay, I, you are preaching to the choir here, but let me play devil's advocate and tell you what uh, Ms. Wild, who was the CEO of the Partnership of New York City, who was here last week, was saying. She said, look, um, businesses here want this. They've asked for that, which I did take a little issue with. But she said businesses want it, and it's important, and we need to cut down on this traffic. And New Jersey commuters who are already driving in, taking the luxury of driving in, driving in and potentially paying for parking downtown, they can afford it. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. Listen, the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce is against the congestion tax, right? The Uber drivers, the Lyft drivers, the restaurants against the congestion tax because they know it'll lead to fewer people coming in, and it's just unaffordable. What Kathy didn't talk about is the fact that last year alone, the MTA had $700 billion in fare skippers, people who literally just didn't pay to ride, right? So they have massive problems going on at the MTA, as they have for years. It's so mismanaged. And so they need an answer. Jersey folks already are paying $17 a day uh, to the Port Authority, right, to go, to, and then they split that between New York and New Jersey. It's been a cooperative relationship for more than a century, right? In the regional economy, or 20% of the GDP runs. So that's a great cooperative relationship. And it should she said they weren't work. paying their fair share at, at Port Authority, the I mean, New Jersey commuters, I mean, uh, and, and that they we, are we responsible it, for all of this. As you know, Becky, you pay t New Jersey folks pay $2 billion a year in income tax to New York City for the yeah, uh, privilege me, of working in New York City, right? So I, I don't know how folks aren't already paying. You know, I think they've got to look in the mirror, take care of their own problems. But the idea they're going to turn around and stick it to people with an anti pollute with this this project that's anti uh, actually fixing any of the problems that they claim. Right. It's actually worse for pollution. It's worse for traffic. It's going to cause a mess north of 60th Street. It's going to cause a mess at the Holland Lincoln and the GW Bridge. It's going to cause more problems. So they should just like fix their own problems, deal with their own issues instead of trying to blame others with this giant cash grab. Josh, you're a problem solver in that caucus. Are you a blue dog? Are you are you a blue dog too? I, I am. A, I am a blue dog. Okay. Um, we're gonna have Jared Bernstein on uh, a little bit later, and, and he, he really pounds the table on on Bidenomics. There's a piece in the Journal today. It says Bidenomics throws free trade and free market capitalism under the bus in favor of centralized government uh, controls. You, you saw the budget that that the president. Um, wasn't going to get anywhere, but you saw it. It was almost, I mean, a lot of tax hikes. Do you have any problems with any of this, with what you're watching? Are you allowed to say if you do as a Democrat? Or do, you, do you think, why, why do you think no, the it's country... It's always good to see you on a Monday. Um, I, you know, the... It's always what? Good to see you on a Monday. You know, you're going right in. I like that. The, the, uh, for, it's first just a, all, I mean, it's a simple question. You, you, you know, you, you pr say that you're a blue dog. You say that you're a problem solver. Are you fully behind Bidenomics and what we've seen? Well, I think if you look at where the economy is right now, in terms of given you're coming out of COVID, giving out of a supply chain strain, 
and look at the numbers that have been produced, that's those are positive. Listen, inflation is slowing. We still have challenges there, but it's down 11 months in a row, two-year low. You've got 13 million new jobs on this administration, 200,000 new jobs in the jobs report in June. Unemployment remains around 3.6 percent. So the bottom line is there's been good progress. We've got the Inflation Reduction Act and obviously the debt deal we just did in a bipartisan way, the debt ceiling deal, which will reduce the deficit by $1.5 trillion over 10. Those are all good, positive steps. As you know, Joe, I'm not for higher taxes. Um, I think we need to make life more affordable for folks, especially here in the Northeast in Jersey. Uh, it's why I'm against this congestion tax and any new taxes on folks to make their life harder. Um, you know, I think we need to do everything we can to make things more affordable. And that's part of why the infrastructure deal was so important to make life more efficient. I think the Inflation Reduction Act took key steps to help reduce the deficit. Those are all things yeah. that I think are critically important. But just, important. Do, you, do you see any issues with, you know, the, the free market sort of being displaced by got the government picking winners and losers and, and a lot more regulation? Any of that? Do, do you raise an that's eyebrow a, with you? That's a, that's a big question. The bottom line is I believe we need we need guardrails, but obviously less red tape and bureaucracy. I think we need to make things more affordable. So if your question is, uh, should we have lower taxes rather than higher taxes? Of course we should have lower taxes. I believe deeply in a free market, and I'm a capitalist. Um, so the bottom line is, uh, I think we live in the greatest country in the world where there's huge opportunity. It's why I don't believe in piling $23 a day congestion taxes on, on hardworking folks, uh, on a nurse or an electrician. You know, we, we need to make things easier for people, and we need to make it easier for businesses to grow and thrive, which is why, again, the congestion tax makes no—things like the congestion tax makes no sense.